Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to convert a paint spraying tank from Harbor Freight, it's a two and a half gallon tank, into a pressure pot for casting acrylic um, knife handles and pen blanks. This particular spray tank was about was just under $100. You can get it even cheaper than that if you have a coupon. And they are used in casting uh, acrylic making hybrid uh, knife scales, knife handles, as well as pen blanks. The whole re rationale behind it is if you increase the ambient pressure, you reduce the bubbles that are in that epoxy mix, and therefore you end up with a bubbleless finished product, uh, less defects, and it, a clearer finished product. This particular conversion is very easy. There's, there's a ton of videos on online on how to do this. Uh, this just seems to be the easiest way. We're going to end up reconfiguring the parts that came with this pressure tank um, and getting a couple of additional fittings from, from Home Depot and capping off and just kind of rearranging uh, the setup so that this can be used as a pressure pot for epoxy casting. Anyway, this is the spray tank that you get from Parker Free. It's two and a half gallons almost set up the way you want it as you can. Just a, a, a few minor modifications. It does come with a um, with a regulator. That little uh, L-shaped bracket is to hang the paint can. We're not going to use that. All the work we're going to do is on the lid. The first thing I'm going to do is take off uh, the straw. I'll call it the straw. This is basically where the uh, spray tank would suck up the paint. We don't need that. In fact, it would get in the way. It would um, it would bang into whatever uh, molds that we've got sitting in the bottom of that tank. So we're just going to unscrew that. And that can be that straw or tube or pipe, whatever you want to call it, can be discarded. Just, just bang into any molds that we had in the bottom of the tank. This is the regulator that comes with the spray tank. Start by adding uh, Teflon tape to all of the fittings. And then you can assemble the regulator onto, we'll call it the left side of that lid. You can see the, uh, the paint outlet and then the paint inlet. Inlet will be marked on the lid. And this just gets assembled with a wrench. On one side of that regulator, we're going to want to put um, an on-off valve, a ball valve, as well as the adapter, the nipple, uh, that will allow this to be connected to my compressor hose. So we just have a female to female um, adapter, then the ball valve. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and just bend up uh, the handle on that ball valve just a little bit just so that it can um, you know, shut off and turn on without interfering uh, with uh, the hose coming from the compressor or the fitting from the hose. Again, tape, uh, Teflon tape on all of the fittings. And actually what I did was I took this whole hand, uh, top lid assembly um, it, with me to Home Depot and I walked into the plumbing aisle and I just found a couple of fittings that I needed uh, that fit you know, the different components. Um, and it was only you know four or five different little components that I had to buy. So that's one side of the regulator. So that's, that's now adapted to hook into my air compressor hose and it also has very importantly a, a valve that's going to control the air going into this pressure tank. I'm going to be able to turn it on when I need pressure and turn it off when I get to the desired pressure. On the other side of that regulator you're going to want to cap off or plug that fitting. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, I ended up getting a, uh, an adapter and then a cap. Just what they had in stock. Once again, Teflon tape, very important, and you want to snug these all up with a wrench. Now 
That's the on-off valve. There's a cap on the other side. And this is the overpressure relief uh, valve. I'll also use that to relieve the pressure in the tank before you uncap it. The regulator itself, we're really not going to use. That, that was designed uh, to control the pressure in which you're spraying paint. We're just not going to use it in this application. On the other side of the lid, you're going to want to cap or plug that fitting. Um, different instructional videos will have you unscrew that fitting and just plug um, the threads going into the cap. Uh, the simplest way that I found to do that was just to buy a couple of um, pipe uh, an adapter and a cap, and that plugged it off nice. Now, this tank is rated between 30 and 60 PSI, which is the working pressure for the sprayer that it was designed for. Uh, for the Alumilite uh, epoxy casting resin that I plan on working with, uh, we're really going to be using it right around 40 PSI. Uh, and that will reduce the size of the bubbles and will compress the bubbles that are in that resin uh, so that the finished product is nice and clear. So now I'm going to test the pressure. I hooked it up to my compressor. I've got it up to you know, 45 psi, and I feel a leak. I, I don't know if you can hear it on this video, but there's definitely air uh, leaking out of the tank, right back by this fitting going into the lid. I don't feel I don't feel any air coming out anywhere else. So I'm going to purge this. I've turned off the air. To my compressor. I'm going to use this uh, pressure relief valve just to purge the air that's inside the tank before I uh, unclamp it. If you if you attempted to unclamp this thing while it still had pressure, uh, that would definitely be a pro that would definitely be a problem. You always want to re release all of the pressure before you take the cap the uh, lid off. The problem is I can't unscrew that fitting because of this uh, welded flange onto the lid with uh, tap holes for the handle. So I'm actually going to use a disc grinder and I'm just going to reduce the height of that. I'm not even going to cut it off all the way. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to use that handle, but, but just in case, I'm just going to take off about a quarter of an inch. should give me the clearance so that that uh, fitting can completely turn and therefore I can I can loosen it and take it off and see what the issue is. And actually I can see what the issue is already. Uh, that nipple uh, didn't have any Teflon tape on it. So I'm just going to put some Teflon tape on that. I reassembled the whole, uh, the whole assembly there, put it all back together. I'm going to do another pressure test right now. I'm bringing it up to about 45 psi. I'm going to turn off the air from my compressor the pressure tank. And I actually let this sit here for about 20 or 30 minutes to see if it was holding pressure. I don't hear any air coming out. That gauge is holding its pressure nicely. So, so this is basically a finished product. You've got a nice two and a half gallon uh, pressure pot that can be used for casting a variety of different do-it-yourself uh, hobby products that are uh, cast resin. Uh, perfect for knife handles or knife scales, for pen blanks, uh, for other uh, wood turning crafts. And this is a, a quick look at, at each part that pressure relief, the cap, the on-off uh, ball valve on the other side of the regulator. All a very easy conversion uh, from a standard Harbor Freight two and a half gallon uh, spray tank. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other knife making videos. And if you like this video, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel.
If you're on Facebook, by all means, check us out on Knives and Knife Making, which is our Facebook group. Thank you.